In this next clip, we see John working with Luis. Watch for motivational interviewing strategies that John uses. Let me ask you a few more questions about it, and they're just sort of questions that come from a particular um, way of thinking about uh, substance use. Mm -hmm. So what do you like the most about drinking? Um, I really enjoy the camaraderie mm -hmm. that I have with the people I choose to drink with. Okay. Um, I enjoy the initial two or three drinks, the, the catching up, the laughter, uh, you know, it's just the social of it. Yeah. More than anything. Um, two, if, if I had to, if I had to give a second place to yeah. it, yeah. it's the, it's the, the, the ventilation. Like when I come home and I just like, it just, it just helps me wind down. Mm -hmm. From time to time. Yeah. You know, and those are typically the times that I have the one, the two beers before dinner. And then mm -hmm. it's like, I have dinner and I'm good. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, that's it. Okay. And, and so um, that, those are the things that you like. Mm -hmm. What are some things that are less good? Um, the, the less positive parts of drinking um, for you? The, the loss of inhibition. Okay. Um, and that ties right into the, the lack of self-control. Okay. And then um, the terrible non-healthy feeling. Yeah. It uh, doesn't feel healthy. No, no. It just doesn't. Especially when you, let's just say you are on vacation and, and you are two, three days into it because you're hanging out in Vegas with your friends or something. Now, not that third day you're feeling like, <laughs> this isn't, uh, <laughs> this is going to hurt, you know? <laughs> And so that, I, I, I don't care for that. Yeah, and it sounds like one of the things that helped you, I guess, cut back is to a, a refocus on athletics or mm -hmm. sports and physical fitness. Mm -hmm. And so I, I kind of hear that in your answer there, that it's that non-healthy thing and you know, mm -hmm. ooh, mm -hmm. this is not going to feel good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and... And so then that really, that's what kind of grips me and pulls me back into reality mm -hmm. more often than not. It's like, okay, well, that was fun, but now we got to get to work. Yeah. You know, and it keeps me away from the alcoholism I was suffering from before. Okay. You know, where I would go weeks on end where it was just everyday drinking and it went from social to flat out necessary. Yeah. And, and that was scary. Yeah, that was beyond that, that was two scary. or three that you feel like mm -hmm. having fun, mm -hmm. felt like you were past that and a little out of yeah. control. And the tolerance was super high. Was and yeah. Yeah. And that, that, was, that was a scary time. I had to do it, you know. Yeah. It sounds like for your health. Mm-hmm. And so and that's what kind of keeps everything in line nowadays. Yeah. Does the... Does the um, Does your drinking change on the basis of some of those other factors that we talked about? Your self-esteem, for example. Mm -hmm. If you're feeling like your self-esteem is pretty high, do, do you drink more or less? If your self-esteem is low, do you drink more or less? Do you have a sense of that? Um, that's where it's important to gauge my baseline mm -hmm. and not go. That's why I, I, I am timid of the 10. Sure. And terrified sure. of the zero. Good. I'm yeah. timid of the yeah. 10 because when I'm at a 10, it's celebration. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to just, well, let's go, you know, and have a good time. And I'm having a good time. Everything's good. Woohoo. And then that, and, and the come down is terrible. Yeah. Because I drink my way right back down to it. Unintentionally, it just happens. Right. It's a pattern that you have it's... noticed in yourself mm -hmm. um, and one that you it sounds like want to avoid. I need to stay away from peaks and valleys. Yeah. Okay. In general, that's what's going to help me stay. Okay. How about stress? Like tension with the parenting plan or mm -hmm. other things? Does that have um, any effect on your alcohol use? When I was younger, yes. Okay. Um, the stress was really, it was a huge trigger. Mm -hmm. But... Um, now that I'm a little older, I, I've kind of I've kind of found that a, a level head helps me sort it yeah. a little better. Okay. 
and and I like to keep my level head while I'm in the midst of you know it feels like I'm at, I'm at battle when I'm at stress anymore and I have to treat it as that yeah like this is serious business business is business I need to attend to this I need to attend to this and then we can on the come down I'll have I'll have a glass of wine and just let it all go okay but while I'm in the midst of it I can't yeah I found I've made really really bad decisions that way yeah I've learned my lesson that way yeah. <laughs> no decision making during that yeah time. I don't need I don't need temporary solutions to permanent problems right now uh -huh. Yeah, and that moderation philosophy, that stay in the middle philosophy that I hear you having is, is like, hmm, maybe don't make any big decisions when you're too high. Mm -hmm. Don't make any big decisions when you're too low. Mm -hmm. Don't make any big decisions when your self-esteem is too high or too low. Mm -hmm. Don't make any big decisions when you've used too much alcohol. Right, <laughs> so then you can see how like, if I'm actually gonna comprise myself a nice good life, yeah, I, I I better not like. I better stay away from a lot of things. I better stay on 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 a good path. Yeah, or else I'm never gonna make any big decisions. I'm I'm struck though by <laughs> by your awareness of that, and you use the word awareness, but yeah. it's like, wow, you've got you know, yeah, yeah, and so if your life is gonna move forward, I I better. Yeah, I better learn how to keep an even keel. Yeah, if I'm ever gonna make any big decisions again. Yeah. So. Uh, w one or two more questions about the alcohol stuff and then mm -hmm. maybe we'll circle back around mm -hmm. to any of those other ones that you want to talk about with the rest of our time. But mm -hmm. I'm just curious. So you said maybe once a week or so you uh, binge mm -hmm. and that maybe about three times a week you drink. Um, yeah. Would that be right, about right? Yeah. And maybe when you do the less, maybe a couple times a week you just have two or three beers. Mm -hmm. And then once a week you might have eight. Yeah. 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 Um, for you, mm -hmm. if you were to say, huh, I would like to drink the amount that's ideal for me, um, what would you describe as, as just the right amount for? For drinks. For drinks. That would be your limit, or that would be oh, during a week. That would mean, that would be my limit. It'd be on any single night, max. On any single night, no more than four. Mm -hmm. um, and how many nights a week of that? Oh, it's still, I still, I still like to keep it around two, three nights a week. Okay. Where it's like, and one of them's my Friday night. You know. Yeah, yeah. The other one's my Saturday night, and then if I slip one in there, it's like, all right, it's Wednesday. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> you know, but like my Mondays and my Tuesdays don't comprise of yeah. drinking and, or, you know, especially when I have my kiddo, heck, I can go, I can go a whole week, yeah. two weeks without drinking if I have my kiddo. Just, that gives you motivation. It doesn't even cross my mind. Yeah, it gives you motivation and it gives yeah. you a focus. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so I hear you saying ideally two to three nights a week, four or fewer drinks mm -hmm. uh, for each of those. So now it sounds like really the only way that you're, I guess, inconsistent with that mm -hmm. is the one night when you have eight or nine. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? So, yeah. So what stops it? What, what, what prevents you from having it be four or less on the night when it's eight or nine? <laughs> because I lose all inhibition. <laughs> when you get... Because I have four, I lose inhibition. four, you lose, yeah. So... I mean, that's just my experience with the treatments and everything I've been yeah, told. And yeah. it's, it goes right back to awareness. Yeah. The more aware I've become of the issues at hand, you know, the better I can work at them. Right. And again, I mean, I hear you describing a high level of awareness to be able to know, oh, yeah, I know mm -hmm. why. <laughs> I know why that doesn't work. Mm-hmm. One of the great things about making these video clips is that we got to involve some other professionals in the process. And I got to meet Joel Simpson. And Joel has his MSW. He's a member of the Crow Tribe. And he works in an agency that focuses a lot and provides treatment for individuals who have addiction problems. So in this next clip, we get to listen in as John has a conversation with Joel about how to handle clients who lie. 
Now, I would guess in your position that you have occasionally worked with a client who lies to you or who you suspect lies to you, but sure. you're not sure. Yeah. I would like to believe not. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> they like me so much. They let you, <laughs> you just uh, facilitate complete openness. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when there is a situation and you kind of suspect that there's a possibility mm -hmm. that a client is lying to you, how do you deal with that? How do you approach it? You know... Um, in you know the field that I'm in, you know we do like UA tests, drug screenings, mm -hmm. and and you know more time than than not, you know a group member will come in and they smell like alcohol or marijuana, or um, and so what I do and and what I found is that just don't openly confront them because you're going to okay. be met with defensiveness because they're already going to lie anyways. Yeah. You know, I, I mean I can I don't know how many times somebody has failed a UA or they had a positive and, oh, it's, uh, no. I was just around my friend yeah. and smoking. <laughs> yeah. Or like, oh, I, I, I drank something with wine in it and, you know, I'm like, yeah. oh, all right, it could be the case. Yeah. Uh, but what I do is, you know, I confront them in a way to where I act confused. Like, mm -hmm. I want to help, you know, kind of piece together. It's like, okay, so you say you drink or, you know, you mm -hmm. ate something that had wine in it or something. So, I mean, like, you know, but your levels would show otherwise, you know, it just wasn't a spike in your levels, it was kind of a drawn out. So that, to me, that shows that you're drinking, so, you know, why would it say otherwise? And yeah. so I let them tell their story. Even yeah. if I know, or if I assume they're lying, I always let them tell their story. And what you'll see a lot is that if they are lying, they're gonna talk themselves in a circle. Yeah. And other times I've had people, maybe even after a group, come up to me and say, hey, no. Yeah. Okay, so maybe I did drink a little bit. Sure. So I, I do confirm them in a way that's not aggressive, but I just okay. question. And you just question. Yeah. I question them, and I just want to help piece together the story because, mm -hmm. and, you know, I just never say, you're, you're lying. Because, yeah. you, know, you know, if I do that, I'm going to break the trust. Right. I'm going to, you know, just spike up all their defenses. In the next clip, we see John and Luis again. And John is doing the cage questionnaire. In the clip, you forget... <laughs> the G for a minute, which, you know, is kind of reassuring. It reassures us all that these things happen and you can recover. I feel pretty guilty about it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but really the takeaway from the session with Luis is, I think, It's pretty interesting. Very interesting. I'm making a list in my head, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First one is dealing with the interactions with your ex-wife. Mm -hmm. Kind of dealing with those as well as you can. Mm -hmm. Next one is sort of self-esteem related, mm -hmm. to this, um, and that has to do with your own evaluation of yourself. Right? Yeah. Next one, maybe related to that, and the other is mood, sort of keeping that mood relatively stable. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned being an addict, and you mentioned drinking, sort of keeping that drinking under control. Mm -hmm. We're going to get back to those other mm -hmm. three, mm -hmm. but can I ask you a few questions about the drinking? Sure can. Okay. Um, so, so alcohol is sort of the, the substance that you use? Yeah. 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 Uh, when was the last time that you used alcohol? Oh, just yesterday. Yesterday. Yeah. Okay. And how much? Um, two beers, three beers. Okay. I'm usually just a beer guy. I yeah. stay away from liquor. Sure. All together. Uh, I never really liked it. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Have a couple of beers. And then, uh, yeah, I, I binge. Okay. Sometimes I, a little I more than you want. I binge about once a week. Okay. And then that's usually me. It's in the safety of my home. Okay. <laughs> Anymore. Just and about how trouble. many is a binge for you? About eight or nine drinks. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then... Um, I'm going to ask you these four standard questions. And, you know, anytime you have a question about my questions, you just hope you just feel free to ask me. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the first question is, um, have you ever tried to intentionally cut down on your alcohol use? Yes. Okay. I've actually, I've actually um, done the AA okay. treatment, the 12-step program, twice okay. in my life. One of them was voluntarily, and the other one was... Court induced. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but the vol voluntarily, I did that for six months. All right. And it felt good. And and yeah. I, and and I and I did feel great. Uh, where it was getting me was that um, I was starting to feel alone. Mm 
Yeah. In this place, um, almost there, it, a lot of things just revolve around, you know, the music scene revolves around the drinking, yeah. you know, your camping. All this stuff just kind of always had it around. And I was starting to feel like kind of left out. Mm -hmm. And it was just the people I was surrounded with, family or whatnot. Sure. And, and, and I just kind of gave in and I eased into it. So the, so the voluntary time of doing the AA thing, yeah. you felt pretty good about that. Yeah. It, it sort of then, and then because of it sounds like social and recreational things, mm -hmm. family things, that you sort of eased back into some drinking. Mm -hmm. um, less than you were doing before. Oh, yeah. 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 So not only have you tried to cut back, you've successfully cut back. Yes, I have. Yeah. Yes, I have. And now it gets, that's where the binge thing comes in. Yeah. It, it gets the best of me, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so, but I, I keep it, I, I am mindful of that. Yeah. Uh, I did learn a lot about my limits and where I'm at with my control. So if I am going to do it, at least I make sure I'm home. I'm watching a movie or something and I'm just kind of like, yeah, everything's safe, everybody's safe and yeah. I'm just going to, you know, have a good time by myself yeah. or with yeah. somebody else. Sure. And, yeah. yeah. But I, I, try to, I, I try to be more careful now okay. that I'm older. Second qu question mm -hmm. of those four is, um, has, have you ever felt annoyed at someone who wanted you to reduce your drinking? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, and it's typically, it's tip, it typically comes from a place or a person that doesn't know how much I've actually... How much work you've done on it? Uh, on it. Yeah. You know, and it's like, well, it's good. I appreciate your opinion, but it, I mean, it, it annoys me, but it's gotten to the point where it's not fair to them for me to react because they don't know any better. Sure. But I do express my, yeah, I express my opinion. Mm -hmm. on myself okay. and where I see myself at yeah, and how hard it's been and, uh, and I st and it still is and I still continue to work. And that sounds to me like um, it's, it would be less annoying if you had a sense that they appreciated mm -hmm. the efforts and the mm -hmm. knowledge and really the work that you've done mm -hmm. on it. Yeah. So third of the, of the four mm -hmm. questions is um, slipping my mind, so I'm going to ask you the fourth one. Okay. Okay. Have you ever had an eye opener? You know what that is? Uh, first thing in the morning, you know, you were drinking, and mm -hmm. then maybe to get over a hangover or to deal with how you were feeling, you had a hair of the dog, if you will. Yeah, hair of the dog to bit you. Yes. Okay. Yes, I have. Um, but not. Uh... More so when I'm on like vacation or something, mm -hmm. uh, but when I'm like in the real world and I know I gotta like, I gotta go to work tomorrow. Like, yeah, I mean, let's put priorities first. Right. But if I'm like on vacation, I don't really hesitate to do it. Sure, sure. And I know it's not good, you know. And I know I I can always hear my sponsors saying, it's "Just your typical, typical drunk man," you yeah. know. But. And I still, I'm guilty of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and it sounds like I, you're of two minds about it. And then there's part of you that you kind of hear your sponsor's voice and, mm -hmm. you know, ah, this is probably not a good thing. And then there's the other part that's like, okay, I'm on vacation. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to put it over in the vacation category. Yeah. Yeah. But it's minimizing nonetheless. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. That's the thing about it. <laughs> yeah. The more you know, the. The more you know, the less you know, I guess is what I'm Yeah. Well, I forgot the, the third one, which is, have you ever felt guilty about drinking? And yes. I hear you kind of saying, yeah. Yeah. I think it's good. It's good for me to just turn it on and off. That just shows me that I can. Gives you some uh, improved sense of control. Yep. Yeah. I mean, even if you do it for six months like you did, mm -hmm. that's six months. Yeah, feel good again, kind of revitalize, yeah. and then yep, figure out where you're at. Yeah. And maybe that'll mean, I'm going to throw out an idea, mm -hmm. okay? I always am very reluctant to throw out ideas. I, <laughs> I hate to do it because right. you know, they're always bad. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, if I have an idea, it's not a good one for you. Okay. Have you ever noticed that? No. No? No, it's actually, no. I, I don't you know, mind them. I don't mind them. 
Well, because you, you said pretty clearly, you know, four or less. Yeah. But then you said, but by the time you get to four, that's too much. That's too much. So I just thought to myself, and I'm just basing it on you. Yeah. What you said. I said, well, why not three or less? Yeah. I don't know. I guess I could have said three or less. Yeah. I guess I mean, the way I saw it was at the end of four. Uh-huh. But... Yeah, it could be three or less. Uh, yeah. You know, or maybe this next time I decide to stop, it won't be six months. It'll be easier to do a year. That's certainly possible. You know, just knowing that I have that control is what's important to me. And like keeping that in my head. That helps. Keeping that chip on my shoulder. That helps with the self-esteem. Mm-hmm. And it helps with the stability. Just knowing mm -hmm. you got some self-control there. Mm -hmm. That you have a little more strength or power over the right. alcohol. Yeah. It gives you, it, it feeds you kind of in the right direction of stability and self-esteem. Right. And then knowing uh, uh, along the same lines of control, knowing the things that on the outside that control my mm -hmm. inside mm -hmm. is also giving me a lot of confidence. In closing, mm -hmm. anything about our time together that um, you would like to remember that you said or that I said and anything that was less helpful? No, it was all, it's, it's all helpful. Um, it's, it's important to be impeccable with your word because your word is very important. You know, yeah. and if you're listening right, you're, you're learning right. Yeah. So none of it was not helpful. Uh, what was kind of cool though is for me to actually have to admit that if at four I'm losing inhibition then why not three max that's a good way of putting it yeah to it's just to. another experiment to try yeah. and see what happens yeah if four is if four is pissing in the wind if you will <laughs> yeah. then why not three yeah 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 I guess I never thought of that <laughs>